I'm not afraid to show a mess. <laughs> you know when you get to those points where oh, I can't be asked to do anything else. Uh, that's how it got with the wiring. Now I've got a bit of a problem uh, which didn't actually become apparent until I did some uh, full testing on this. As in, suspend the back wheel, arm it, open the throttle, check the lights and everything else. The only trouble I've got is when I open the throttle it doesn't matter, you can hear this that's the marker switch that's literally, it's nothing to do with the marker switch itself because uh, it's not connected, There's not, just the wires aren't going anywhere it, what happens is, is the hazard warning lights come on although they're not actually fitted at the minute uh, the hazard warning lights on the clock come on and the headlight starts flickering it comes on and off randomly, I, I don't get it when you switch the hazards on, the hazards on come, uh, come on as normal, the indicators come on as normal, or well, they're not fitted, they come up on the clock on the telltales. Uh, but I can't turn the bloody thing, I can't turn the hazards off. And I don't get it. Now there's going to be a lot of smart ass people out there who are going to say, well I knew you'd have a problem because you're running AC, DC and everything else, all in very close proximity, ah oh, bollocks. I've got no choice, so I've been sorting the wiring out. This switch here, the negative in here somewhere, this is the, oh, sorry, this is the hazard warning switch. The negative on this goes to that casing. That casing is directly connected to the handle bars, which means that I've now got a negative earth on the frame, which is what I didn't want. My theory is, and I don't know if this is right, it's actually, the frame is now acting as an RF receiver and there's loads and loads of interference feeding back into the TNC which is somewhere buried in this bloody monstrosity of wiring. So for the time being, this is the connector, this is the connector that goes to the hazards. Simple as that. So I've disconnected it, it's working fine. So I've decided, I'm going to tidy all this wiring how the bloody hell did that get there? Well, I'm going to try to anyway, I've got to shorten things and I'm going to make it rooted because so, it's just bloody everywhere. Because of the very limited space and the lack of junction boxes and things that I can't actually fit or I should be able to fit actually. One day I'll fit it. Uh, I can't actually do it properly as I wanted to so it's going to have to look like a, a monstrosity but I've got no choice. So I'm going to tidy it up and I'm going to put it all back together and then it's going to work perfectly. I've been inundated with a question. <laughs> There's one person who doesn't quite get it. But for anybody else who doesn't quite get it, the reason why I've taken the headlight off the front and taken the, boy, uh, taken the lights off the back and the indicators and everything is purely for testing. I need to test this thing out to make sure that it all holds together and everything works. Now as it was, I mean it still bloody looks like a motorbike, even I agree that. Um, but it looks less like a motorbike than it used to because it's got a saddle on it. It's probably the only way you can di differentiate between that and a motorbike now. But anyway, that's the sole reason why I've done it. I'm still going to do the MSVA I'm not doing it at the minute because I've got to test it. I've got to make sure it bloody works. Um, the winch on the front, which I admit is just looks a right mess. Um, what I've done with that is I've put a wire here. This thing, uh, it's just wound in. Literally, it's just wound in. And it, it's not going anywhere, it won't come out. I put a, a power connector on there, which is wired to the wired to the motor, which is a good place to wire it because it's got to power the motor from the connector that you put power into. Now also, I've designed and 3D printed this. It's not finished yet because I've got to put a backing on it, and it's got two connectors on. One goes to the motor, and the other one goes to the battery. And the idea of it is that sits there. 
I'm going to make a, a mounting for it so it can't go anywhere. So all I do is I take my phone off and then I can put that on there. And this is this is a prototype of my battery. Now these batteries, when I take that cable tie off there, which is black, not white, when I take that cable tie off there, the batteries will come out because there's actually AA battery terminals on there and the wiring's on the end. And that is going to sit there, somewhere like that. Don't know yet. That's only going to be there obviously temporary while I take it up the stairs but I'd need it somewhere that I can actually put number one the battery and number two the controller and then I can take it off and put it back in my rucksack. Now before anybody thinks it this will handle the power of that no problem. I've hung off the end of it while I've powered it with this battery. It's, it doesn't even struggle and nothing gets warm. The terminals don't. I've pumped uh, 25 amps out of this battery and it's fine. That's all I need. So it's all coming together again. Like I say, that plugs into... You can't get these connectors wrong because they're gender specific. Although I can't plug them in with one hand. Yes I can. So that one goes in there and then the battery goes in there I'm not going to operate this because I ain't kidding, it's noisy. It's ridiculously noisy. And for those people who said, why don't you mount this on the inside of the building? Uh, I can't do because it's a communal uh, walkway and stairs. Lots of people use it. I just can't do it. It's not. It's against the law. Well, the rules anyway. So it's got to be mounted somewhere. I am going to design some quick release bracket of some kind but unfortunately I haven't got a lathe I haven't got anything to mill anything out and I've got nothing to actually cut any metal the only thing I can design is 3D printed stuff which I'm fine with but mounting something solid like that is, is a nightmare I'm going to be replacing the, cave, the, the rope with black stuff uh, just to blend it in a bit more <laughs> so I might actually change that wire to black. That mean I can't differentiate between positive and negative. That'll be interesting, but at least it'll look good. What I might do with these batteries, I might release these on uh, put them on Thingiverse. The design. Uh, this is 3S2P pack, and like I say, you can just as soon as you release the cable tie, they they're, they're just basically slotted in of the terminals so I may when I've when I've perfected it uh, this these would be good for a power wall to be honest that sits on there like that so bear with me it's not it's not perfect yet I need it perfect and then I might be able to release it but I won't release it till it's perfect because I'm a perfectionist Oh, and the person who said that the winch looks hideous, yes, I do agree with you, 100%. It does look hideous. And that one person also said that better planning from the start. Got a message for you. Bollocks. You can't plan for a bad back, herniated discs, and God knows what else. This is a mean to an end. Mean to an end. This is a means to an end. I've got to have it. I can't mount it on the wall. I can't mount it anywhere. That is the only place I can mount it. I can't make it removable at the minute because I haven't got the facilities to do it. So, if you don't like it, don't f watch it. The other thing I had to do, which you're not going to be able to see it, but there it is. You're not going to be able to see it, but there it is. So you can see it now. There you go. Oh, look, you can see it, you dickhead. The other thing I had to do, now I've got it on the paddock stand, uh, I had to change the gearing slightly and I had to sit there with a Dremel for God knows how long cutting the chain ring down to make it bloody fit. Oh, can you see that bit there? I can just about see the piece that I had to bend off. That's actually off version 1 bike, believe it or not. Uh, it's only there for show, but in case I do need it, it's got to be functional. So I... <laughs> I couldn't pedal it purely because the gearing was ridiculous. At one revolution, I think the wheel turned twice, so <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't have done it. So I've changed that. So now it's a lot better. I can turn it. I can probably pedal it. 
I've tried to pedal it across my living room but I ended up hitting the wall. That noise you can hear is my f phone just at the f wrong time. That noise you can hear is the chain just touching the, the mudugger on the other side, just about there, wherever. So uh, that's it. The wiring's done. I've done the gearing on there. I've changed it on the back. I've put the tensioner on. Yeah, I couldn't just change it. I couldn't put put it on a bigger cog uh, purely because the chain wouldn't have been long enough. So the only the only thing I could do was change the chain ring. That was a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Also, what I'm doing is this thing is in that thing there is the belly pan which is in three pieces. I'm not happy with that. Not happy with that. I can't get it to. I can't get it to line up. I can't get it to seat properly. It just don't work. The back one isn't bad. Uh, the idea was put the wires in there and then put a stopper in there or something, or maybe seal it up. I don't know. But I'm not happy with it, so I'm redoing it in one piece, which is going to come out shit.